We know of races called Stallion Making Races, the Golden Slipper, the Caulfield Guineas, but soon Sydney's the Everest will be achieving the same status, particularly when you have a colt taking the lucrative prize, beating home a field of 10 Group 1 winners. Hailing from the Encosta de Lago sire line, Coolmore Stud's new local boy for 2020, yes, 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 has all the attributes to continue that fabulous sire line. And speaking of speed, we check in on international star Merchant Navy whose first foals have just turned one. The load is on for the Everest, the Tab Everest, and the gates are back, they're off. Yes, yes, yes is winding up. The Colt, yes, 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 takes the lead. Centre of the lane is charging at the end. Yes, 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 wins the Everest. It's always exciting having a first season sire here at Coolmore Australia and this is a really special stallion yes 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 we know of course he is by your own Rubik who's a son of your own in Costa de Lago and it's just great to see him here he's only a young fellow but he's already putting on plenty of weight it's very exciting every year to welcome the racetrack stars back to the farm and it's no different this year with yes 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 the first Everest winner to retire to start and to carry on the legacy left before him by Rubik and in Costa de Lago who have done such a great job for Coolmore Australia over many years. He's let down particularly well in the time he's been back here at the farm and put on a lot of weight. As you can see here today, he looks amazing and he's been very well received by Australian breeders. He is still a young stallion though, so it's all very new for him, isn't it? How's he settling in? He's settled into his new environment particularly well. Each and every week that goes past, he, he looks better and better. He's put on roughly 35 kilos in, in condition since he's been here and his coat looks amazing. A number of local breeders have been here to the farm to see him and have been particularly impressed by him. He covers a lot of ground, he's got great scope, he's a beautiful mover, he's got a sharp action, he was a very fast horse and you can see why. He's, he's very correct, he's just got real presence. And for Coolmore, I mean you would have been looking at him, you know, keeping tabs on the very first of the Rubik's uh, racing and he was he was a very good early two-year-old, he, he won two races, one at Flemington, one at Mooney Valley and that was in December as a two-year-old too, so he was he was up and going early. Well, Rubik, his sire, is a highly promising young sire and, and he has a great pedigree and obviously we followed him with great interest. Yes, 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 had wraps on him from a very early age. It's so important in today's environment to, to be up and racing early and to be able to win two races in December of his two-year-old season was, was a great credit to him. Yes, 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 draws about a neck in front. He produced a phenomenal performance in the Todman, running a, a record time of 108.4, winning in a faster time than the likes of Piero, Exceed and Excel, Written Tycoon, Vancouver, General Nadim, all of whom have gone on to become successful stallions in their own right. It was a phenomenal performance, beating the lights of Bivouac, Dubious, Bellevue Hill. It really stands him as one of the elite two-year-old colts in that generation. Already having the likes of Piero and Vancouver, previous Todman winners in this in the barn here at Coolmore, we just, he was just a horse that we had to have. He was second in that golden race to Bivouac, but he hadn't had things going his way leading into that race. Yeah, that performance had a lot of merit in it. Second up from a spell as a, as a spring three-year-old and Bivouac had three runs under his belt. So to head him in the straight and his condition just give out in the end and get beaten by less than a length by a very good horse with exceedance back in third, that, that performance had a lot of merit in it. And it served as a, as a great lead up to the Everest. Yes, 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 wins the Everest. The eyes of the racing world were on Randwick that day and yes, 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 turned up there and beat 10 individual group one winners. Some of the best sprinters we've seen here in Australia for a long time. A, a field like that has never been assembled before. The likes of Nature Strip, Santa Ana Lane, Red Zell, Trekking, Elise, In Her Time, Sunlight, etc. It was a phenomenal field and he blew them away in track record time. A minute 7.3 at Randwick, the fastest 1200 metres ever run at Randwick. It was a brilliant performance and the scenes after the race in the mounting yard with Tom and Bray and all the other owners. It was just great to watch and it's something that we'll remember for many years to come. And you know, you can see in the same barn in Costa de Lago's nameplate, you've got Rubik right next door to his son, yes, yes, yes. The Encosta legacy lives on. Encosta de Lago is one of the most influential stallions in, in recent memory in Australia. Obviously he's a champion broodmare sire, but also his sons and grandsons have gone on to become leading sires in their own right 
through the likes of Northern Meteor and Zoostar and, and Deepfield and Rubik, who are all successful stallions. Yes, 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 with a time form rating of 125 is rated superior to any of those horses. So we're very excited to have Yes, Yes, Yes here at Coolmore Australia to continue the great legacy of Encosta de Lago through his sire, sons and grandsons. Merchant Navy's flashing. Merchant Navy, obviously a very special horse for Coolmore Australia. The first son of Fastnet Rock to stand at Coolmore Australia, following on from, from his sire, Fastnet Rock, and, then, and his sire, Dane Hill. Now that we're seeing the first foals of Merchant Navy on the ground, we couldn't be happier. And as a result, he's been very popular here in his third season this year. Merchant Navy on the near side of City Light. Well, Pete, obviously, you know, having known Merchant Navy so intimately and being involved still with him as a stallion, you must be so proud seeing these gorgeous foals. It's incredible. It's like you feel like a little father on the winter. You'll see from the three folds you saw today, there's the peas in a pod and there's a little bit of the mothers in them. But overall, um, what I love about them, there's a lot of snippets in them for me. A lot of them are short back, big hip, short cannon, which is very encouraging uh, down the track, obviously, for precocity. He really did get some gun mares in the first season. Incredible mares. I mean, it's one of the best book of mares I've ever seen at my time at Coolmore and since. Elusive Wonder has thrown Modern Wonder as well. After seeing away game as a yearling, which is why we bought the mare, this filly has a bit more scope than away game had, which is great. Same sort of leg, big shoulders, looks fast and early, um, but probably a little bit more scope, so uh, couldn't be happier. And the colt from That's How I Roll, I mean, you can really see that the cross, the fast net and the, the snippets there, it's just a, a magnificent colt, just all the angles are correct. He is the one foal of all the ones we have in the farm is so like his father at the same age. Mm -hmm. That beautiful shoulder, beautiful hip, short back, short cannon, just looks fast. You know, his mother was a stakes winning Spatestown mare from America, mm -hmm. uh, family of I'm a Chatterbox, all speed, and I agree with you, you can see the, the traits of fastness but a, and a lot of snippets. To me, he sort of typifies what we're getting by Merchant. And then the Dame Margot Fontaine Colt. Now, this is out of a high chaparral mare. You know, that lovely Dane Hill Saddler's World's Cross that we've seen working so well with Fastnet Rock. You can see that here in this fellow. Completely, and he's, he's a different model than the other two that we've seen today. And I just wanted to show him because obviously it's a high chap mare and that cross, so you have a little bit more scope, but you still have even though he's got more scope, he's got a great hip, like all of the merchants, and a great shoulder, big strong forearms and gaskins and a nice short cannon. Um, he stands over more ground, yes, but moves terrifically. And the, other t the others come in the slipper and the sires, and he can, he can win the Caulfield Guineas. All I can say is I know everybody is bred to him, is bred back to him, and that's the greatest accolade. And for us, I think from the farm, there was 26 went to year one, 22 last year, and over 20 this year again. So we're heavily bested. <laughs> We feel like Merchant Navy is the heir apparent of Fastnet Rock, and he has seven Group 1 producing sons, including Hinchinbrook, who is a leading stallion, and Merchant Navy is bred on the same Fastnet Rock snippets cross as Hinchinbrook. So we have every confidence that he'll go on and become a successful stallion in his own right.